Hello and welcome to season two of Stuck in the Mud, the podcast. In this season, I'm opening up some of the bigger themes from my book, Stuck in the Mud, Stories of Hope for When You're Stuck. If you're interested in the book, it is on general release. What I say to people is, look for the yellow boots. Now, in this season, I'm interviewing a bunch of different people in a way that I hope you'll find interesting. What we've done is chosen a theme, prepared four questions each for each other, and then taken it in turns to open up the conversation to see where we go. I hope that you enjoy all of these conversations, and I really hope to see you soon. So today I've got a uh, an old friend, uh, a good um uh, a good old friend, actually, uh, with me on this episode of Four Questions. His name is Colin Piper. And Colin, I'm thrilled to uh, be doing this with you. We talk about a bunch of different things, but for those who don't uh, understand who you are and your face, to just give us a bit of context to who you are. Uh, well, my name's Colin. Uh, I'm uh, married to Melissa. I live up here right at the very top of Scotland, overlooking the Isles of Sky, Lewis and Harris. I've been involved in youth ministry for 36 years and I'm a dad, a granddad. And um, I've had John Proctor in my life for decades and my hair's fallen out. My stomach has grown. I don't sleep at night. It's just hard. It's just what? so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, my first question, actually, um, uh, my first question to you, and and, uh, and I should just say, Colin and I are going to ask each other questions and trying to make, uh, we'll try and make, a, a, you know, an interesting interview, a two-way interview for you who are listening and watching. Um, and my first question to you actually starts us mm -hmm. at the beginning of our story together. So mm -hmm. we met mm -hmm. in 1997. Um, wow. I was just down the road from where we are now in a place called yeah. Calibri Mortimer. I remember. And, yeah. and, and I was training and you came and you scooped a bunch of us up and took us to Devon. Mm -hmm. And and I remember you saying, um, and I, I don't know when you said it, but I remember you saying that the organization um, that that's called Southwest Youth Ministries, mm -hmm. the organization that you started back when 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 we first met, was an organization that you were trying hard not to start. Indeed, yes. I remember you saying that you, you were trying to, to, to kind of not do that. And yes. so my question to you, my first question to you, Colin, is this. What was it that compelled you to do it, even though you were trying hard not to? A uh, very simple answer to that, John. No one else wanted to do it. I, I, uh, so we're working in the southwest of England, had a real passion for rural kids in growing up in contexts where you couldn't do traditional youth ministry in the way, you know, you hire a youth worker, that sort of thing, you kind of volunteers and they were fantastic. So I came up with this cunning plan of uh, having senior youth workers based in cities like Exeter, Plymouth, Torquay, Exmouth, that sort of thing. And then they would cluster trainees around them. And uh, I won't name the organizations, but I went to at least three major movements. I won't name and shame them. <laughs> but you wouldn't know them. They're all British. They're all there right now. And I said, I shared the vision and none of them said, all of them said, no, I'm not interested. So in the end, I said, OK, well, we'll have to uh, set this up ourselves. And thus, Southwest Youth Ministry was born. And I didn't, I'd forgotten that you were there right at the very start of all that, John. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Up in that, uh, you know, there was a little, little office in Exeter. And you just used yeah. to, you know, we come for training and you tell us all different stuff. And it was, yeah, it was, they, they were, they were, they were important times for me. Well, I'll tell you what, John, I'm going to read this. I've got a few questions written out here and, uh, and they've been vetted by Melissa. So none of them are, are rude, inappropriate or are likely to get us arrested. But having said that, I'm going to reverse the order of the ones on the left. Uh, and I've only got four left, actually, out of the 27 I wrote. But the, um, I'm going to start with the second one, because you have been in my life a very, very long time. And um, I guess I've been a bit of a mentor to you. But what I really want to know, because I do, I mentor quite a few folks around the world at the moment, is uh, this is going to be a real, this is a real crazy question, OK? And I know I haven't prompted you, so this is going to be fascinating. I want you to tell me, what did I miss? In other words... Can you give me a few things 
you wish I told you when you were 22 or however old you were in 1997, we won't do the maths. Um, either I didn't tell you or else I did, and to be fair to me, you just didn't hear. What do you wish I told you at 22 and somehow it didn't get through to you? What? Right. Oh, my word. Right. Well, I was 18. Well, I was 18. Okay. I was 18. Um, no, and I think no. I just turned 19 in the first term that I was with you. What do I what do I wish that you had that that you taught me that 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 wow i think i think i think one thing that i have kind of learned actually do you know what i know i know exactly what the answer to this is <laughs> yeah. you you did this great thing colin which actually i did appreciate and i and i and i and i and i would still stand by it as an approach okay i'd come back to you year after year saying colin i'm not I'm not doing, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I'd say something like, I'm really struggling with this person and, and it's not working and we keep falling out. And I remember you telling me year after year, you'd say something like, um, you know, oh, I think that there's something that God's trying to, you know, teach you there. And, okay. um, and, and what I learned <laughs> about six or seven years later was that God was teaching me that I was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, <laughs> and it and it it took quite a long time for me to realize the reason why these relationships aren't working is because of me and yeah. and i i think that there's been times in my life where i've i've been in the mentor position with other people and i've cut to the chase a bit quicker and i think <laughs> i think that you were so desperate what it felt to me was you were so desperate that I succeed that at times, and I can't believe I'm going to say this for people that know you, but at times yeah. you were a bit too nice to me, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> people who know you will know, they'll yeah. go, he was what to you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. If you know Colin really well and you're watching this or listening to this, <laughs> um, he was, I was the one he was nice to, but, but I think, I think that, um, I think that there were times in the in those early days where I I I'd nurtured a bit of a belief that I was I wasn't the one that was the problem, mm. and um and I think I think I perhaps would have taken that from you. I don't know what your what your thinking was at the time, but I think I would have taken a bit more of a shaking from you. Um, yeah. But I appreciated how kind you were to me, actually. I don't know. That's a really interesting point. That really fascinates me, that answer. I need to reflect more upon that. Was I being kind, cowardly, or just uh, unaware? And uh, I, I guess, because I guess the older you get, the more aware you are of uh, there are two sides to every story. And in fact, your side is is rather less uh, defensible than the others often. <laughs> that, that, that comes with age. So I don't know whether, I, as I say, I was just being kind, cowardly, or just oblivious. <laughs> I, we stick with kind. Let's stick with kind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, so, so let me come to my let me come to my second second question to you because recently, one of the things we've spent a lot of time doing. In the past, it was youth work and camps and things. In recent years or recent months, we've been we've been revisiting one of your uh, one of your books, and um, uh, and the book's patriarch for those who who haven't um, uh, who haven't come across that. And we we actually spoke about this in a written blog together. But I thought it'd be nice to actually just talk about this for a second between the two of us. Is um, you know, you wrote Patriarch a few years ago. It's the story of Abraham. Yeah. Um, and, and I wanted to ask you um, in this interview, um, uh, why that's so important and why you have come back to that. Um, because, uh, because I think, you know, for, uh, again, for, for those listening, you know, this is a book that you wrote a good few years ago, but we're spending quite a lot of time on it today, um, as opposed to another book or another story. So why, why do you keep coming back to it? Again, a really, really good question because I have another book I'm trying to write and I, I just can't get can't get to it. This one really wrote itself. And as I I'm, I'm doing the audio version again and um, 
I actually really enjoy doing the audio version because yeah. I, I love getting back into the story. I, I've always loved the story of Abraham. He comes across as such a real character. Um, and I, I just, um, I, I just love trying to get into his skin because his encounter with God is just so wonderful. And yet you realize that it, 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 it's the thing about the Bible is, is it's, it's so abridged, you know, things happen. It seems this happened and this happened. In fact, there's 25 years between events and this sort of thing. And it's a long drawn out process. Yes. It's agony at times, yeah, yeah. Which is much of the Christian life, of course. And, and yet it, it shows us what's possible for someone who is, um, just a, a very ordinary person who fails again and again mm. and uh, has lots and lots of rough edges and yet somehow through all those rough edges he he can encounter god and can be used by god in such a powerful way again mm. the older i get the more and more aware i am of my rough edges when mm. i was younger i thought i was god's gift to the world <laughs> now i i see it differently <laughs> yeah and, uh, and and abraham shows gives me such hope that he he was someone with all those frailties all those failures all those mess ups yeah. And yet God uses him. I just, I, there's something about the story. I just keep returning to it. And mm. John, I'm loving really recording it. Actually. Mm. I, uh, I, it's just, it's just an amazing story. Yeah. I love it. I love listening back to it and kind of, um, uh, top and tailing, uh, your stuff. And then hearing you talk about it on videos, it's, it's very cool. It, well, let, let me ask you about your book. Okay, this is this isn't a mutual appreciation society, I promise you. But because I've read your book twice, I am the first person on planet Earth to have read your book not once but twice. That's twice. Well, <laughs> and here's here's the thing about your book. It strikes me. It has a very personal feel about it you know what i mean don't you I, yeah i mean most books are birthed out of a good idea and i quite often have people come to say to me i've got a good idea of a book and they then tell me and i act encouraging um and they were well, by the time they've told me i normally don't need to buy the book because they've told me all about it what the people i'm interested in are the ones who say something along the lines of i've been reflecting upon or wrestling with this, that, or the other, and we then talk about it. And at the end, I say to them, have you ever thought about writing a book on that? And they go, oh, no. <laughs> that's the book I really want to read. Now, Stuck in the Mud, that's what it's called, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, got, it's personal, isn't it? It's got a very yeah. personal feel about it. Where, I want to know why that is. Where did, where did that personal touch come from, do you think? I... Um... Actually, I mean, talking about this not being a mutual appreciation thing, I think like we're in dangerous territory here because actually, one of the one of the one of the um, maybe one of the best things I learned from you, Colin, was was being a storyteller, um, and I think those early days of of listening to you speak and telling stories and learning how to tell stories in schools work environments and in lessons mm. and things the you know I, I think my, the first 10 years of my ministry I was only telling stories that you told and I think part of that kind of personal touch that comes through and stuck in the mud has come from taking real things in in our lives uh, and I say our lives because they of course they're my stories but they're also Louise's stories and the kids stories but taking those things and 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 recounting them through the lens of a storyteller and i think i really kind of have learned to love being a storyteller and to draw cool. people in to a story and um i think you know through tragedy through loss through you know um difficulties like losing losing jobs and losing people and all the different things that have happened one yeah. of the things that's really helped me to i think deal with all of that is is being able to recount those faithfully as a storyteller um not not making them kind of larger than life and silly but but telling the kind of the heart and the root and i remember yeah. you always used to talk about you know drawing people you know when you're telling a story you draw people in and i hear it through your podcast as well you draw people in so that they can really hear what it is you're saying yeah. and and 
um, I think I hope that one of the things that has come through in the book is the pace of a storyteller um, to draw people in to to listen and and I hope that that's I hope that that's the thing that resonates with people. I you know I'd like people to think that that my theology is good, but more actually I want people to 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 get more you know to really kind of hear those stories and and feel the the weight mm. of them. Mm. Oh, you do that. You do that really well. By the way, I must just tell you. Um, I know you got another question for me. Yeah, you know, I, I, I love. I, I'm a. I'm a storyteller, and I, I did a. Um, <laughs> I recorded something for schools in the United Arab Emirates the uh, the other okay. day, and they. I got a review by a six year old girl who said, "Colin has a very interesting turn of phrase." which I thought for a six-year-old was a fairly impressive review. I'm not telling, I don't know why I'm telling you that, but I, it, it's just, <laughs> I, just, I feel so, you know, I, I've got a real ministry to six-year-olds in the UAE at the moment. Yeah, but, wow. Yeah. Well, well, I... for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, on the, on the, um, on the theme of, on the theme of writing, I want to, I want to ask you a question about writing because I've recently been trying to, and it is finished. I mean, you've you've read this as well, actually, or you've read a an up a reasonably up to date version. Oh. So um, recently, I've um, I've been writing a novel, and it's yeah. um, and it and it's about ten thousand times harder than writing my stuck in the mud book. Um, yeah. And one of the issues, uh, and I'm getting to the question, so don't worry. One of the issues is that my characters, who I had a really I have a really keen sense of who the characters are kept on writing themselves in ways that I didn't want them to be. <laughs> so as a, as a writer, I wanted to ask you, you know, you're, you've been writing biblical yeah. characters. Yeah. How do you stop those, those characters from taking on a life that is not faithful to, to how they're supposed to be? <laughs> The reason I'm laughing, John, is well, you're going to find out why I'm laughing when you come to my question, my question in a moment. Um, it's 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 a, it's a really good question because I live in fear actually of misrepresenting Abraham, Rebecca, or whoever I've written about because um, I'm going to meet them one day in heaven and they're going to go, oh, you're Colin Parthy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I'm running a, my, my, my latest project's about a character called Lucius, who is an amazing character. He was from Cyrene, and he was one of the uh, founders of the Antioch Church. It looks as though he was also in Jerusalem uh, at Pentecost, and if he was a mate of Simon of Cyrene, which he could have been, he might have been there at the cross as well. So basically, this guy photobombed all the key moments in early church history. It's an incredible story and I'm loving writing it. But of course, I don't, I don't know much about him uh, because he, there's only occasional references to this guy, Lucius yeah. from Cyrene. And um, <clears throat> I, it, 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 it's a real responsibility to, yeah. to try to get into the mind and into the heart of, of someone who's there on paper. Um, and not to transpose your own personality, your own culture, your own your own worldview into that. Um, but having said that, what I love about humanity is that there is there's so much that's that's common. Mm. So Abraham may have lived four thousand years ago in a culture far, far away, but actually. He was a human being, and it comes out. You can, yeah. and so I actually, I don't mind characters writing themselves. That my favorite, uh, my favorite characters were actually the women, not the men. Right. I think when you look at Sarai and even Hagar and Rebecca in the in the Abraham story, are oh, there some there's there's some beautiful characters emerging there. I love Rebecca. I love her. I won't give too much away because it's no, all no. in the story. You know the story anyway. But I love her sense of adventure. This guy, this total stranger turns up and says, I want to take you back to uh, to marry uh, my master's son. And she goes, yeah, okay, I'm up for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the family weren't so sure, but she says, oh, come on. What, 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 what harm can happen? And it, <laughs> the, yeah. so you pick up something of that, of that character character and it surprises you mm. um i'm not i'm not too faced by that i because i don't know how you do it john but i i 
patriarch who it took me years to write because I wrote it, rewrote it, rewrote it, rewrote it, rewrote it, read it again, thought, mm, yeah, OK, had another go. And and so it evolved. It didn't, mm. it didn't just appear. <laughs> it yeah. evolved. And I give it time to evolve, basically. But it, they, yeah. oh, it's just wonderful. I love, yeah. I just love the biblical characters. And a little spoiler: you you wait to hear some of, uh, see some of John's characters in this this book he's written. It, it they they'll make you think because they're um, yeah, it's different. It's different and good different, by the way. Ah, well, so nice. this is my question, John. This is this is why it's hilarious. Okay, Go on. I'm going to read it. Uh, I've written it down. I'm just going to read it out to you because this is funny. Um, so getting back to Stuck in the Mud, um, uh, and an insider's question, author to author, okay? There are some bits of a book we graft over as we write, some bits which basically write themselves, and there, then there are those bits which surprise us, <laughs> such as the impact they have on us. Which was the bit in Stuck in the Mud that you finished and you thought, oh my, did I write that or has that just rewritten me? Yeah, my word! I can't believe we're like we basically just. I mean, that that yeah, we have. yeah, that's that's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, but but is it? But actually, it's funny. I mean, and I'm quite a new writer, so I'm discovering this stuff, yeah. and I and I and I that really does resonate with me. That idea yeah. that something actually wrote wrote me. Yeah, there's a part. Um, it's actually a part. Um, uh, in the in the book where I write about um, worship leading, which I like to think i know a lot about and then yeah and then and then and then my relationship with my with my mum yeah and um and there's this part that's about understanding something enough to um to 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 um, feel joy through it and there's um I I mean I'm I'm not going to remember the exact words but basically I remember the day when I when I sat and I wrote I basically wrote this thing you know when you understand something enough to be able to choose it then you can express joy through it that's what it says when you mm -hmm. understand something enough to choose it then you can uh, express joy through it and I remember sitting thinking I. I don't know where that ke like I don't know where that came from, and I had to Ooh. sit with it to even understand what I'd written, <laughs> because I thought I think that that sounds that sounds like what's on my heart, you know, because I was trying I was wrestling for a couple of days with how to explain the relationship that I have with my with my stepmom, and how Ooh. I had to choose her as a teenager because I'd yeah. I'd lost my mom as a very small child. And then I just accepted this, this, um, I just accepted this new lady as my, as my mum. I was only five, but when I was a teenager, I'd realized I'd lost something. Like I hadn't really experienced that loss as I grew up because in some senses, I, you know, I'd lost one mum and got another one quite quick. And I didn't really remember the transition because I was too young. But once I'd realized that I'd lost something, I then had to choose this other, this other, this other lady, um, even though I'd known her for a good 10 years already, um, that I kind of got hit with the pain of loss in that, in that sort of mid teen thing. And um, that's what I was trying to write about. And, and I still am not quite sure there's elements in that chapter where I think, oh. uh, I sort of think, I hope people understand what I'm trying to get at here because I'm still wrestling with what I've said. Do you know what I mean? When I read it back, I think, man, I really need to chew that over. But um, yeah, that that those were moments that sort of wrote themselves. Um, you know, they sort of came, they spilled out of my heart. There's actually a couple of points uh, in the very last chapter of the book that I wrote when my dad had passed away and there's elements in there as well, where I'd almost shot the words on the page. Do, do you okay. understand what I mean by that? Like I'd almost fired them down with very little consideration and I'm still, there's elements there where I reread and I think I don't remember being the person that wrote that. Um, but I think that's cause they just came straight out of my, my, my heart really. Yeah. No, I can relate to that. Mm. 
I've got my my last question for you. We're going to change tack here. Mm -hmm. My first question to you was um, was about the early days of Swim um, and our relationship, yes. and they felt like days of hope. You know, they were they were days when we were taught. You know, you talk about I'm going to build this and I'm going to buy everyone a car and I'm going to I'm going to you know build a campsite i'm gonna you know everything was full of hope let's do a camp let's do a thing let's there's another school to break into not break into but you know for ministry break into this <laughs> there's a new community there's a new person yeah. <laughs> uh is there still hope to cling on to today because wow. this feels so different these days oh john so to, uh, my, my job's very different these days. I work all over the globe, so I do the same thing. It's just a bigger pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I started this morning in the Philippines, ended up in Guatemala and somewhere in between. I was in, or oh, where was I, Lebanon, America, various other bits and bobs, and uh, I'm all over the world with a wonderful team. But just doing the same thing. It's it's been like going from Exeter to Plymouth, but it's 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 actually from um, from Cebu to um, Guatemala City. <laughs> and, um, I think it's changed. John, I'm 59 now. It's a scary thought, isn't it? But I have as much hope today as I do. I, and I, I you know, my day starts. It, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty grim. I get up 6 a.m. for my quiet time. I have my quiet time with the Lord. 7 a.m. I have to turn on Al Jazeera because that's the only place I can find real world news. Because I, I need to know what's going on in the world before I start talking to the world. So, mm. um, and I. Like today, a report on about uh, how the COVID is worse in the Philippines than anywhere, anywhere else in the Asia Pacific. Now, I'm then on a call to the Philippines, so I need to know what's going on. In we've had a couple of people today arrested in Myanmar and this sort of thing. It's, it's grim out there. It's grim. Mm. And so my taste of it's grim news. And then I bring on these young uh youth workers who just are trusting god wow. and seeing him do amazing stuff and it is my utter utter privilege to serve these guys yeah. every day at the moment i start on the in the east side of the world start in australia tomorrow and end up somewhere on the west side of the world i've uh, no idea where I'm ending up. Oh, I'm actually ending up in Kenya tomorrow for some bizarre reason. Wow. But anyway, uh, every day is the same and every day is so different. Wow. And yet this one truth prevails. There is hope that God is Lord and that he will have his way. And we need to see a fresh revelation of his Holy Spirit. Um, but uh, that's happening and that's coming. Wow. And no, 36 years on in full-time ministry, I'm as hopeful as ever, John. You'll be mm. pleased to know. Don't give um, up. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an encouragement. Thanks, mate. Well, I got to tell you, because I reckon you're at half time now, John. I know you're not a big sports fan. Um, so you're going to struggle with this imagery. Um, others will get it, though. I want you to imagine yourself running out for the second half of the match. Okay. Wow. What's your game plan? How are things different for you for in the second half and what they might have been in the first? I um, I'm in a, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm actually really sensing Colin. I mean, what this is one of the things we talked about before I hit record. I'm really sensing at the moment that something's shifting for me. I'm 42 now, and I and I and I still feel in some ways like I have a lot of energy, but there's things that I have been realizing recently that are not quite the same as they used to be. Like, you know, I used to run out to every youth group and be there, you know, with every young person. And, and I, and I feel at the moment, like, um, I mean, you know, you introduce yourself as, you know, as a, as a dad and a granddad and, and all that different stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, I've been a dad now for 14 years, but there's a there's a there's a point in my ministry now in my life where um, I think accepting and beginning to live like a dad um, uh, is is something that's a challenge to me because I still want to be I still want to be kind of running out to everything, but the problem that I'm getting is that 
now I don't just have one one little environment. I've got six, and what I'm finding, and uh, and and I'm sure. I mean, you'll probably chuckle uh, chuckle at this, but what I'm realizing is that I can't be in six places at once, yeah. and so instead of instead of being there with every single young person on the ground, my 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 young people, if you like, are the leaders who are out doing the thing. And I think that's been, that's becoming a diff, it's a sort of a, a growing pain in me for the next period of my life is that I do have some of my own young people. I've still got my, my kind of, you know, people that I go and, and, and spend time with, but, but, but actually the leaders who actually are, are they're the age of the young people that I first, um, you know, I first worked with when I was 18, you know, they're in their sort of twenties now, but these are the people where, you know, I think I, I, I kind of come into this realization that the, the mode that I'm in has got to, has got to change. Um, I'm also finding there's this sort of uncomfortable thing where I'm like, Oh man, whenever I needed for, let me use the example of whenever I needed something important, unlocking, like a school or a relationship with a counselor or something like that, you know, I would wheel you out. <laughs> and, and, and now that this different, this mode, this different thing in me is I like, actually, I'm the person that people wheel out when they need something doing. <laughs> and this is the different, this is the different thing where, 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 where this I'm, I'm, I'm relearning, I think is what I'm saying that the second half of the match is one where I'm in a different position than I used to be. Yes. And I think writing is a part of that. Yes. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not so much the kind of flashy worship leader going around as much either. Um, I'm, you know, it's, it's a different position and I, and I'm not entirely certain what it all means, to be honest. I've, I, I feel like um, I feel at times a little bit lost in it and I'm not quite sure what it all means, but, but that's, that's, that's how I sort of feel. Does that make sense? It makes all the sense in the world. I totally get it. It's like a footballer, you know, when you, when you get a bit older, you, you can't run around quite as fast, but you, you're clever enough to know where to be in the, to make sure you're in the right place. And so you just play to your strengths and you, you have to preserve energy, but you, you use your wisdom instead of your energy. And uh, that's, that's what it is. It's a, it's a time of being wise and imparting that wisdom and, and acting like the senior player on the pitch. And uh, I so get it, John. It is funny though, thinking of you as the senior player on the pitch. Yeah, I have, we haven't got time now for me to tell all the stories I was going to tell about that you. Is so, that is so oh. sad because oh. it's, you know we've been on this call for a while, and yeah. I'm and I'm you know obviously I'm really concerned that we yeah. don't waste the people's time. Um, <laughs> uh, so so no, it's such a shame we can't get into those stories. But uh, yeah. but Colin, Another this time. has been this has been absolutely brilliant, and I've <laughs> loved this, and I hope that. Um, uh, that this has been an interesting conversation for you listening and watching. And um, uh, Colin, let me just ask you about uh, where people can hear your audio for, for Patriarch. Yeah, well, it's on most things, actually, isn't it? I think if you if you say Colin Piper Patriarch to Alexa or Siri or something, it will give you some version of it. <laughs> the the place to really find it though is it's on Podbean and it's uh, it's also on Facebook Bible Novels uh, Facebook page, or you can visit the website BibleNovels.com and it's all for free. It's everything's for free, so you can just go there and uh, and uh, get, get the audio. And uh, I think there's even a I can't remember whether there's an ebook there or not anymore. To be honest, I think there well, is. But you'll be really welcome, and do do tell us how you how you find it and pass it on to others as well. Yeah, do. And if you want to catch up with me, you can get me on uh, social media at John Proctor Author, and you can visit my website johnproctor.co.uk. And I want to just uh, thank you again uh, for listening to us and watching us, and I really hope to see you all very soon.